everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and it's Triple Play Day. It is the third week of the month, and we have a wonderful triple play for you. I'm here with Natalie and Misty. And the block we chose this month is the Dresden. Yep. So and fun. so we're super excited about the things we have to show you with the Dresden, and I'm up first. So let's take a look at this quilt behind me. So I'm calling this little bit of sunshine because it just feels that way to me. It feels so like happy, a little sun beautiful. Yep. with the rays. And there's so many things you can do with the Dresden besides just make a plate. For sure. So to make my quilt, you're going to need one packet of 10 inch squares. And mine is called Effervescence. And it is by Sue Daly for Riley Blake. You're going to need some accent fabric. This is for your little sons, and you're going to need three quarters of a yard for that. For your sashing and inner border, you're going to also need three quarters of a yard. And for your border fabric, you're going to need, surprise, three quarters of a <laughs> yard. The backing back here, you're going to need three and three quarters of a yard, and I want to show you that back here. Oh, oh that's Isn't that pretty. darling? It's just pretty. I think pretty. any of these fabrics would make a great they backing. Would. Oh, though, they would make a just... great back. Yeah, they're, they're happy. Geometric and yeah. They're happy and fun, and it's just absolutely darling. You're going to need a little bit of fusible, about a yard and a half, to make your little corner circles with, because I just fused those on and sewed around them. It did nice. it really easy. You're going to need the Dresden um, ruler, and you know ours just goes all the way to the top of the layer mm -hmm. cake. Uh, I used a squaring ruler to square them up because I squared my blocks. It's not a round Dresden. This is a square Dresden, mm -hmm. and I squared them to nine. So you're going to need a square one, and you're going to need something to cut your circles with. And um, I use this circle cut ruler, but there is in the pattern there is a quarter circle which you can yes, trace. Yes, or and you I, can trace a bowl or a plate. Any size any circle, you want, however yeah. you want. You'll have a circle size in your mind, and you probably have that sitting right on your desk, <laughs> so you can use that anytime you want. So let me show you how to make this. Now this is an easy Dresden quilt, even easier than your normal Dresden because there's no, you don't have to make a Dresden. No you don't peaks. have to make the peaks. That's pretty awesome. And so to make this, what we're going to do is we are going to pick five different fabrics. Now you can do less if you want, um, but I chose five because that's how many is in my block. And so it depends on how good your rotary cutter is. Ours is really good, so I'm looking for some fabrics that are different like that, prints in that here. That orange print right mm -hmm. there, that's The pretty. orange, there might be another orange in a different color. Oh, this one is multicolored. Let's use this one. Let's see. And we can use, go back and use Natalie's favorite. <laughs> I have one with some strings on it, but that's all right. And then let's see what else we have in here. How about a green? All right, so I'm gonna line these up oh, all. You have a green, you need a pink. Oh, oh pink. Would sorry, be... I'm being bossy. Pink. <laughs> Best of colors. Pick, pick that's good right. colors. That's all right. That's all right. Anyway, this will make three uh, blocks when you do this. So I'm going to line these up perfectly with each other, just like this. And they don't have to be 100% perfect because we're not going like right on the edges. We're going to cut it this way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to make one cut like this. And then I'm just going to kind of move this away for now. And then I'm going to flip this and make a cut here. I'm lining this right up along the side of the first cut that we made. Like that. So there's one. And then out of these side pieces, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. So a little bit of waste, but not too bad. And then on this one, I'm going to flip it around because I don't want to have to cut at a weird angle. Anytime you know you find yourself cutting at a weird angle, that's danger. So just don't do it. <laughs> so I'm going to trim this off right here. All right, so now one of these is all ready to go. And we've picked all different fabrics, so they're all going to go and they're all going to blend. And you're going to do this to your whole layer cake. And what we're going to do is we're going to line these up so they make a pretty pattern. And let's see. I kind of like this out here and maybe this one over here. What do you think? We're cute. All right. So the key to doing this, to making this work, is that we're going to sew these together, but we're going to stagger them an inch here at the bottom. So right here, we're going to go up an inch, and then when we add this one, we'll go up an inch, and then this side will come back down and back down. 
So when you start to sew them, you know, we're going to put these together and this one's just going to hang off about an inch at the top. So you just eyeball it? Mm-hmm. Okay. We're just eyeballing it. So it's just about an inch. All right. Let me look at so I can see what you're doing here. And then you'll add the next one. So just kind of finger press so this that back. This one goes Mm -hmm. And put it up higher. an inch again. Yep. So like about like that? Sure. <laughs> sure. Is I that, just, that's very non-committal. Is that right it, or not well, right? It's super easy. Yeah, I, you can't really get Pretty it, forgiving, you know. Pretty forgiving, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you just have to remember to go up and go down. Okay. All right. And then we're going to come down the other side. finger press, and then this one, when you put it on, yeah, just come down. Okay. So you have the tall guy in the middle. All right. Like, is that good? Yep, that's perfect. Okay. No, there's no rocket science in this block for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Although the first one I did, I sewed them right together and it didn't work. It didn't work with them straight. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't give me a good corner mm. out here, you know, and so I'm like, all right, we have to think about this a little more. It's really more. fun. It's kind of freeing to just be able to shift them like that. Well, what's fun is, you know, what you get at the end to yeah. me, it's like, oh, this absolutely. makes it really fun. And this one's even farther down. Yep. Yeah? And then it just comes down an inch. Okay. So we go up, 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 down, down, down. All right. And again, because of what I'm doing with this blocks, there is a little bit of waste, but nothing that can't be used up in your crumb box. There you go. Perfect. All right, Misty, if you'll press this nice and flat. Of course. Love a crumb quilt. Yeah, I'm going to grab me a squaring ruler here because we're going to square this block to nine inches. Nine or nine and a half? Nine. They're all nine inches. And I did that because that was, that was like the most I could square it and, mm. and still reach my point it. out here. Okay. So I've got my nines lined up here on the edges, and sometimes they're not perfect. And if they're not, that's all right. And what we're going to do is we're just going to trim this like this and this like this. And then because this is our nice square corner, I'm going to pull this back around, pull it out at nine, and then make sure, because I had a little edge over here that didn't want to behave. So we're just going to trim that off and make it behave. So then this is your block like this. And then, of course, we need to cover up that center. Now, in your pattern, You'll have a little quarter circle like this. And these are so great because um, you can just trace this through on your fusible and then, you know, iron it to your accent color, whatever you decide that is. And then it has the sticky on the back. And then we're just going to lay this on here like this because it's a quarter circle. And we're going to press it. And you want to, you might want to put something underneath say. here because it will stick to your mat. I only tell you this by experience. Okay. So, so just um, like a, an, old, an extra piece of fabric? Uh, just an extra piece of fabric or something. So okay. if you lay that on there, or you could use a pressing sheet or anything okay. like that. Yeah. But we're going to line this up in the corner and like that, that. That'll kind of just pull right off. You won't, yeah. you're yeah. just doing it to no. protect your mat. Yeah, and you won't, you won't lose that fabric or anything, no. And so then... This is your block right here. Nice. That's it. It's so cute. And so this one right here, you can see if you come in really close. I love, um, you know, whenever I do any top stitching like mm -hmm. this, I love, we have these machines <laughs> that can do 80 million stitches, and we generally use three of them. That's right. True. And so yes. I use that turkey foot stitch on here, and I just think it looks really, really cute. Really that is cute. So And good. so find a, you know, stitch that you love, yeah. and then you can just stitch right it around the top. Straight stitch or yeah. zigzag yep. or Oh my gosh, yeah, any or... of those things. And so it just goes together really easily. Then comes the sashing. And the sashing, the block is squared to nine. So your sashing is also going to be nine. So you're just going to cut your, oh, that one looks a little short. You're just going to cut your sashings. <laughs> that one looks a little long. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I know why. I know why. Hang on. These, I cut these at 10 inches. And so we're just going to cut them to match the block. So we're just taking an inch off of that. And these are nine inches. 
I'm like, wait, why aren't these fitting? But um, I think I cut a 10 inch strip, but on your yardage, you can just cut a nine inch strip and then cut your sashings because one goes this way, you know, but then and the other one will need to be a little bit longer. Yeah, and then, well, then you'll cut a whole long, long one to put strip. a long strip for the row. So your sashings will go in between right here, like this, and then you'll put a row of sashing in here, and you'll do the same thing on every row, and then a little inner border out here. And these are all just inch and a half, so they're nice tiny little ones. And this is just a little four inch. Is it four inch? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I, my mind went blank for a moment there, and I was like, wait, what size is this? So a little four inch border out here. We use the Baptist fan as just our perfect. quilting, which I yeah. think it just looks so perfect great. on it. Yep. It makes a quilt that's 55 by 55, and it comes together super fast because every time you do your cuts, you get three of these. It's and so it, uh, you know, I, I just hope you'll give it a try and have some fun with it. And I think we are, mm -hmm. who's next? I'm not sure. Whichever one. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a surprise. Well, Misty, it looks like you're up. I guess so. So this is my quilt. I, I love it. Thank you. I'm really happy with how That's it turned beautiful. out. I called it Dresden's Around the World. And I feel like I took a, you know, play out of your book it's for this. It's so, so cute. <laughs> thank you. So to make this quilt, you're going to need one layer cake of black and one layer cake of white. And then I also use this jelly roll of the Free Spirit Designer Solids from Tula Pink. Just all these bright, happy colors. <laughs> you're going to need your... Uh, Dresden, Dresden template, tool. Yeah. a turning tool is really handy to push out all those peaks, some fusible, and then for your backing, you are gonna need four and a quarter yards, and I use this beautiful Tula oh, wide beautiful. back. And so and I, I love how you did the binding Thank scrappy. you, so there's really no, there's very little waste because I used all the extra jelly roll to bind it. That is I love great. that binding. And so if you opt for a 108 like I did, you'll only need two and a quarter yards. Perfect. Awesome. All right, so let me show you how to make it. All right, so to make this, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your jelly roll. The scariest part, it I always, know, it always like, feels a little yes, bit <gasps> a little terrifying. Yeah, and so, so pretty though. I know, they're such happy colors. I do wanna point out, there's a few that are just really light, like these light grays and this light green. I just left those out, Yeah. just because I wanted lots you of wanted contrast. You wanted lots of pop. colors. Exactly, and so I just took a few of my strips, because I wanted every single Dresden blade to be different, so I just, stacked them up and cut a bunch of my little Dresdens. And so we'll just stack a few here so that they're all lined up. And we are just going to turn our Dresden template this way. So we're just getting a little two and a half inch Dresden plate or blade, I should say. And so we'll cut and just like Jenny, I flipped this around. Yep, no so, danger. No danger. And I just grabbed a few at a time and started um, so I had a bunch of variety because mm -hmm. I didn't want them all to be the same. So yeah. I'll just cut a few more colors. Do you so, want me to start sewing? Yeah, and so then to sew those, we are just gonna fold those in half and sew right across this wider side. You across the top, straight on. I have you some cut, wanna... yeah. So we can just add to that. I'm gonna shorten my mixes. stitch a little. Yes, Wait, that's a... you're not, you're not, oh, you are. Yeah. What? What Nothing. Natalie? I was confused for a moment. <laughs> and so to make one Dresden plate, you're going to need 20 of these little guys. So I have a few of them done, but we can just sew as many as you'd like. Well, and I honestly, sewing these as a chain is so much fun because when you get done, oh, you feel like you have like a, little a little garland. Party. Yes. Yeah, it's very cute. Yeah. It's very fun to work with these. And it's just tiny little stitches. So yep. yeah, so I shorten my stitch length a little bit. That's a great tip because it's you gotta don't be wanna lose those. Small enough to hold together and big enough to still pick if we need to. Exactly, you shouldn't <laughs> need to pick though. All right, so All here's right. our little party. Yeah, and so we'll just trim these apart. Okay. Just a few at a time. And then I just use this little wood turning tool and I pushed it right against there and it just helps push that out and then now you can nice. press that and it should kind of line up with the yeah, center. Yeah, the, the seam should go right down the middle. That's what you're looking for. So if you want to press a few and for my brain, I just started sewing five of these together at a time. Oh, okay. I would just stack them on my um, sewing table and I just sew five and then I would put those four little sections together. 
So I'm going to sew two and two. That's perfect. And then open them up and, and add that yeah. last little. Because again, two, you can chain piece pretty yep. easily. So we'll open this up and then we'll look at where we are. And I think that little orange one can fit right in the middle. Perfect. Yeah, this is perfect for chain piecing because you're going to be making a lot of these little dresdens. So just have them all cut and sit and sew, sew, sew. And remember, you know, when you sew tiny like this, it's not harder. It's just it's smaller. Just smaller. A little bit more time consuming, but... Well, and I do feel like, as far as a small piecing project goes, this one's pretty forgiving, because um, yeah. you're not matching these little seams up with anything else, so... Yeah. And so I just, like I said, I made these five, and then I would make another until you have your completed plate that looks like this. And so it's just okay. this tiny little Dresden, so I have that They're ready so to go. Sweet. So we're gonna take one of our black 10-inch squares, and Natalie, I actually, like, pressed this Okay. Like that, if you'll give it a crease line for me. All right, in half once then. Both directions is fine, but one is more important than the other. Okay, do you want it both directions or do you want one it just is, one? One is good enough. Okay. And so what I did is I wanted to make sure when I centered this on here that the downward part of my Dresden mm -hmm. was right on that line. Oh, okay. And so that's how I knew it was in half. I didn't want the peak on that. And so then I took my fusible web and we're going to trace our circle just on here. Do you have a little pen? I think I have one over here. That would be great. Let me see. Here we go. Perfect. Thank you. So we can just trace this. And it's really easy to see through. Yeah, it totally is. Or if you struggle with it, you can get a light box or something. Or just trace or hold around it up your to favorite a mug. Exactly. <laughs> this is about a four and a half inch circle. So if you can find something close to that, you'll be good to the go. The oatmeal lid is really good. You're right. That's probably exactly <laughs> right. I always think about all the things that are in my cupboard <laughs> I could use. And then so for your centers, you're actually going to cut some of your 10 inch squares in half both directions. So you have fives. So we can just press this to that. All right. On the wrong side. And there isn't really a wrong side on a solid. No, it's true. Which is nice. It is so nice. So then we can grab our scissors and just cut this out really quick. On that line. I don't know why, but it's so much easier to cut with the paper adhered it than is. it is just it to cut totally a circle is. on fabric. I think because we grow up cutting and gluing with paper as little kids, oh, it's maybe. like ingrained in us a little bit. That paper is just more comforting. So there we go. And so now we can peel that backing off. And then we will use this to hold everything down. Okay. And so we just center that up in the middle and give it a good press. All right. There we go. Let me clear some of this out of the way. I think it's probably good. I think it looks great. And so that just holds it in place enough to go back and do any of your top stitching or okay. finishing stitches that you want to do. And so I just did a little blanket stitch on this one. You can see that's all done. Uh -huh. And so now we are going to match this up with our white 10 inch square. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a line corner to corner to match up with that press line that I did earlier. So we're just going to take this just like so. And then we're going to make sure that that's going the same way. And that's so after we sew this, that we have the majority of our little Dresdens peeking through. That's okay. what we're looking for. And so now we're just going to sew a quarter inch on either side. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I was wondering how you were going to do that. <laughs> down the other side. There we go. All right. Did this feel a little scary to you at a first? A little bit terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said, I was like, I feel like Jenny, I'm cutting my block in half. So now we're gonna cut right on that line that we drew. 
just like so. And that is going to give us these two half square triangles with our so half cute. Dresden on the dark. So if you That's want to press great. that. That I is great. That. Everything's already in the seam and enclosed. It's all enclosed, so you don't have to worry about any of that. I think I'm going to press to the light That's side totally this fine. time. Yeah, you've got the bulk just, from the... Yeah, the bulk of the block wants to be that wow, way. Wow, Misty, that's very, very clever. Thank you. So cute. And because they get a little wonky when you do that, mm -hmm. I did square all of these to nine. And so I just used that diagonal line on my ruler and just trimmed these down. This is great. Thank you. So I'm just gonna... It is... Trim a half an inch off each side. Yeah, basically. So we'll just trim this off just like so. Oops, missed my little corner there. There we go. And then spin it around. Make sure we're all good. That's really fun. Thank you. Absolutely adorable. I just can't believe how much movement it has. Isn't that fun? Up on the board. It's yeah. just gorgeous. And so it is just eight across by eight down. I went with square so that we could complete this kind of around the world pattern. Mm -hmm. And I laid it all out, of course, so, so that I could have So point the square that. out to me up there. So this is just our square right here. Okay. And so then you're just turning it back oh, and okay. forth Perfect. to get to get this pattern. And I quilted it with the uh, time warp pattern. And then, like I said, I used all of those extra jelly roll strips for the binding. And that so is great. very little waste. So how long are your binding strips? Did you cut those? So they ended up somewhere between like 12 and 14 inches. And oh, okay. I just whatever was left, that's what yeah. I used. So that is great. It worked great. I love the scrappy, scrappy binding. That's Thank really you. beautiful. Me Thank too. you so much. It finishes up at 68 inches square. So it's a nice throw size. That is darling. Thanks. I love it. All right. You're up I'm next, Nat. All right. All right, Natalie, it's your turn, and I love this. I'm it's up. so happy. It's very fun. So I called my quilt Drifting Dresdens because I, I like, like a little it. alliteration, and they kind of just go wherever you want them to go. Yep. So I love it. It's kind of fun. It's really so fun. So let me show you how to make this quilt. So I used a package of 10-inch print squares, and this is um, Besties by Tula Pink for Free Spirit. I also used the Essex Linen Yarn Dyed Black. And so you can use that in, it comes in a, a pre-cut, um, or you can get two and a quarter yards of whatever fabric you want for your background. I love that we're getting this in a pre-cut though. It's beautiful, it's background. super easy to use. Yeah. yeah, and so then for your border, you'll need a yard and a quarter. And look and at those fish. A, it's a five inch border and it's great. It has these cute little fishies. The fish and the treasure chest. All of the fabrics in this are like, little animals so there's dogs Always. and turtles and fish and and it's fire super hydrants cute. for the dog yes. perfect of so course because your, your bestie dog needs a fire hydrant that's right life. that's right <laughs> and then our backing is super fun so if you're using regular yardage you'll need four and three quarter yards but if you're using a 108 it's two and a half and i i love it so tula always enlarges one of her pieces so or cute. or several and they're just so fun this is just the best friends friendship bracelet throwback I and love I love it. it. I think it's so great. You and Sarah wore one of those. We sure <laughs> did. <laughs> All right. So we're going to make two separate blocks. So one of them is going to be the large 10 inch Dresdens mm -hmm. and that is very easy to do. I actually need that layer cake so I can pull a few pieces out of it. There we go. Because I'm going to show you kind of a tricky cutting that I did. It's not, I mean, it's easy. I like tricky. I can't get that off neatly, <laughs> so we're gonna tear it. <laughs> Look at that cute puppy. Oh, it's so fun. All right. So like you guys, I just select a few. In, uh, it, we're gonna do this cut to your entire layer cake, so you don't have to pull out different colors, but we will for the sake of the mix and match. Look at oh that my cute gosh. bunny. <laughs> oh my goodness. This one has turtles. It's wow. Pink, like a yellow. She oh, is very, uh, very. Clever. I don't know if this is a hamster or a gerbil or something, <laughs> a mouse maybe. Mixed in the it's flowers. super cute. Who knows? All right. So we'll do. I don't know. I have a few cut already. So we can mix and match those with the other ones. The goldfish, of course, I love. <laughs> And then there's some great blender prints Fillers, in here. Yeah. yeah. I love that so like one this, too. Which one? I mean, just this. This one, yeah. yeah. It's a little geometric print. 
Little hearts. Yep, all the fun. We'll grab this one. Sure, okay. So however many you think you can cut through, which, you know, really about four is pretty comfortable. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is take our straight edge ruler and cut a three inch strip because we're gonna get all of our cuts out of one square. Well, not, you know, the whole layer cake gets cut like this. So these make up our little Dresdens for our tiny Dresden plates, and then the rest get cut into large Dresdens. And oh, if you, perfect. you know, we have the Dresden template, but if you don't, every one of our patterns comes with the Dresden that you can use as yeah, well. Yeah, you and can this trace is already, it, cut it, cut it out of, you know, template yeah. plastic, or just use the... It's just there for you if you need it. Yeah. So we cut and flip, same as the other that's a little bit of waste and then this and you'll use every piece you'll notice I have one on there that's just a half and that's because that's all I had left and I just thought <laughs> I thought well if I have a half I still want to put it in the quilt sure. it's cute yeah. I love it it's so cute so I went ahead and threw really that cute. one in there and that's just instead of placed in the middle obviously I mean it's pulled down and placed right mm -hmm. along the edge it's really cute all right, so we cut all of these and set them aside. And then these ones are for our little three inch Dresdens. And like Misty's, you're just, just gonna line that up with the three line on your template. Cause you cut that three inch strip off first. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Yep. That is smart. And then you have all of the little Dresdens that you need to make the little plates. Now Misty's was cut at two and a half and That's yours right. is cut at three. That's right. Just a little bigger. You can make your Dresdens any size you want. You actually could. All you of know, these. This could fit up a, even a little bit bigger if you wanted to. Yeah, the reason I did the three is just so that I could you get could all get the, the cuts out of my, That's right. That's out right. of these, the pre-cut. Yeah, Makes before sense. I go recommending bigger, we got to remember right. we need all You'll the cuts. Need, you could go <laughs> smaller. If you wanted to make two and a half inch, you could do that or, you know even littler than that, but right. you'll, True. you'll tiny, need tiny. the, at least the threes. So cute. And this is perfect for your crumbs. Throw them in. It sure is. All right, so we're gonna make two separate blocks. So let's make this one first. It's fairly simple. You're just gonna line up. Uh, let's see, we've got one, two, six, three, and you just, Mix and match. I, I did start out just by sewing sets of two together. Okay. But you now, do kind of want to make sure they're going the right, this. the right direction. Can it, you take one and just cut it in half and use it on either end? You could, but you're still going to trim it to 10 inches. Oh, okay. So if you want to cut them in half, you can. Mm -hmm. but, I just didn't know if that yeah, was just a start yeah, by that sewing Yeah, that makes two. sense. But yeah, we'll start by sewing s sets of two. And as That's long as you keep too. them going the same direction, they'll, they'll all match up. <laughs> Did you have a few that didn't? Yes. Because <laughs> you grabbed Ask them. me how I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, it doesn't really matter um, which way they go because you can't tell that, you know, some of them started out with the, no. the wide end at the top or the mm -hmm. bottom. But, yeah. Let's use this purple one instead here. Or maybe this pink. I think this pink one with the lions. Because everyone with has a bestie. Oh, it's not lions. It's They're kitties. Cats. They're, cats. They're house cats. <laughs> I was like, everyone has a bestie lion. <laughs> <laughs> or it would be tiger, too. I'm just a bestie oh, cat. Having fun. You can press these if you want. I would love to. Give you something to do over there. Right. I know you don't like to stand still. <laughs> you know me well. One more, so these get sewn back together this way. Just keep going, like you're making a big right. row. And you could, if you wanted to, you could cut this into a big long strip sure. and then just cut 10 inch squares oh, out of it. True. Or you can make them a block at a time, whatever is more comfortable for you. 
That's a great call out. I did a quote one time and I was like, do these pieces. And then somebody in the comments wrote, could you not just do a long piece you and cut them? And I'm like, you totally yep, could. You could continue all the way down and then you'll just take any square, but the 10 inch is pretty easy. And we're just squaring them to 10 inches. So it, you know, and you can even see so some of these. With the layer cake. Yeah, some of these have a little bit of extra. We could trim that up just a bit. All right, let me iron that press one. Press that one. And then we'll have two of these done. And the little one is just um, very similar to Misty's, but I didn't do, you know, the half square triangle thing. All so. right. All right, so on here, and you can, you can kind of center them up if you want, or you can go all the way to one side or the other. It's completely up to you. There we go. I'm going to turn that a because nice I can't get that block. side without going under my own arm. <laughs> yep, that looks pretty good. Looks Not great. a whole lot there. Okay, so that is what makes up all of these blocks. And you can do your own layout. I put them this way because I thought they looked kind of cool. You can make more or less. This is a quilt of creativity. You have freedom mm -hmm. to do whatever you want. I love that. So, I love how you turned you know, some and laid some. Yeah. Yes, and I did kind of do um, like a fence rail. So up and down and up and down just so that they did whatever they wanted so to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They played well. So that's that part. And then you're going to take your regular um, 10 inch squares and we're going to put little Dresdens on them using our three inch blades. And those are just the same as the ones Misty made. So we probably, I mean, we can stitch them together and flip them if you want to, but I feel like, I feel like it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, you can go back and watch how Misty so did it. It's exactly the, the same. So across the flip top it. and then put them together. There's still, I believe 20 blades in this. Um, I did a little bit of heat and bond on the back of mine awesome. because mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to just press it down. Yep. And you're really just eyeballing it. I you do can, that too with my scraps. You can mm -hmm. fold it into fourths and um, do a little, like a finger press and mark your middle. You know, so you can center it on the square. Which, like, I don't know if we'll be able to see it because it's kind of a dark heathered linen. It's really pretty, but that gives us your set, your direct center. And then, you know, lay that out how you want it. And then I did, I traced my circles onto a piece of fusible heat and bond or, or you know, so fuse light or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it is about four and a half inches square. There's a template that comes in your pattern. Or you can trace anything in your house if you like your squares or your circles bigger or smaller. Yep. Do you know it is That's interesting? That's completely up to you because it changes the way that the it really the changes blade looks, the way or the, the blade plate. looks. You know, if you put a large circle in there or yeah. a smaller circle, it really changes the way it looks, which I think is fascinating and very fun. Yes, yeah. and so this, I mean, you can do these straight on the the full ten inch square, or you can cut them in fourths and do them one at a time, like you did. Either mm -hmm. one is fine, and then we're just pressing that down and doing whatever decorative top stitch you like, whether it's a straight stitch, a zigzag, or one of the many hundreds of stitches that are on yes. your machine. And that's it. That is how, you know, that's the, the simplicity and the fun of this quilt. I just and kind of get, threw them on there. And you'll get in the pattern. Of yeah, you can, you can absolutely follow my layout or you can make up your own. I think it's just, it's, it's just really fun and fun. easy and playful. And you have a few of solids in there too, Yes, right? so I added my Essex Linen solids from my layer cake to make up that negative space. Yeah. And it's just, I believe, six by seven. Yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Six by seven, I have a nice fat five inch border on it, which honestly, I think it would look great without a border yes. if you wanted to do that. But I thought this fabric was super I love fun. It's really fun. Okay, I, I did do a so, sort of like a, a trick on it because these fish are directional. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have them going sideways at, at the top and sideways at the bottom. So you have to cut it length of fabric to oh. get that. And then my they're swimming upstream and and down on the sides. Oh, that's cute. So they're oh, all funny. they're all sort of like um, horizontal with the quilt yes. border. And your quilting pattern? It's flames. Oh, so this fun. is very similar to our um, time beloved time warp, yes. but this is a it's called flames and I think it's really cool. It looks great on there. Gives it a ton of texture and I think it kind of went uh, because even though it's a fire pattern, it sort of looks like water. It does. Yeah.
So, and, and then the cool. quilt ends up being 66 by 75, which is great for picnics or twin beds, twin beds, perfect. yeah, or lap perfect. quilts on your couch. Yep. I mean, it's it's just great. It's a wonderful size. So I love it, Matt. That's I hope awesome. I hope you guys like it. It's sort of fun and playful, and yeah, kind I like of it a lot. You got a lot great. of creative license. Do whatever you want with it. <laughs> so fun. So we hope you enjoyed this triple play. I think we hit it out of the park, girls. It was what really do you think? Fun, this was yeah. fun, yeah. It was fun. So we gave you three new ideas, all based on the Dresden plate. And we just hope that you enjoy them and give them a try. And we'll see you next time for Triple Play. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.